And welcome to our presentation today on overcoming burnout, being brought to you by Anthem EAP, your employee assistance program. We are a free confidential resource for you and your household members. I will be sharing at the end how to reach out to us. Very, very amazing services that we offer. So really recommend that everyone just reach out to us. We can offer something to everyone. My name is Shanti Douglas and I'm a mindfulness and heart math certified trainer and coach. My background is in psychology, human services and master's work in consciousness studies. I also wrote a book called Everyday Ease, Mindfully Moving from Burnout to Balance, which I will share in the chat box. So I feel like I'm pretty qualified to talk about burnout. I don't know about you, if you have had experience with that, but I have had experience with a burnout. And I really love to talk about it with other people in a way that I wanna support you in not reaching that point of burning out. And if we're close to that, good awareness, great information to have. And what I'm really hoping to share with you today in our limited time is how can you recognize if you're close to that stage of burnout, how it's different than stress, and what are some of the things that you can do immediately, like today, to bring yourself further and further away from that and hopefully support you in a longer list of um, self-care items to really help you navigate all of the changes that you're experiencing in 2020, right? This year that has never been like any other year. We're still in the midst of this. And how can we support ourselves as we're continuing to want to grow and learn and be the best that we can be and still maintain some level of contentment, peace, ease, and hopefully some joy as well. So again, any questions, any comments, feel free to put them in the chat box. I'll be monitoring that as we go through our time together. So I'm gonna go a little bit quickly during the beginning about what burnout is, et cetera, but just use them, use that time as reflection. Like how is it for me? Where am I on this journey? So burnout, it's, a state of an emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion. And it's caused by excessive, prolonged stress. So it's like there's a continuum of it. And it's nothing that is, um, nothing that a weekend away refreshes us away from. A weekend away is absolutely fantastic. Please do take them, please take your time off. But with burnout, we have this continual sense of energy depletion. And it's different than stress. Stress is more of an excitatory energy, right? When we get stressed, when we get frustrated about something, when we get anxious, when we, we even you know, get overwhelmed, um, maybe not so much on the overwhelm, but the initial stress reaction that we have is that fight or flight, right? If I think that, I can tackle the issue or the problem or the, the lion or tiger or whatever it might be rustling in the bush, I'm going to take care of that, right? I'm gonna fight with that. If I think it's too big for me, I'm gonna use that energy that my body is coursing through my body, accelerating my heart rate, giving me all of this very quick hyperactive response to keep me safe, I'm going to get out of the way. And when we are in this constant state of go, go, go of, you know, this year, the homeschooling, the working from home, the, the grocery shopping, the, all of the changes that we've been going through in our social sphere, et cetera, when we're constantly feeling like we're bombarded from things, our body and our mind and our brain can only keep that going for so long. So we may initially begin with that frustration, anxiety, et cetera, and then we start getting tired. We get demotivated to do things. Eventually we get exhausted and our energy is depleted. And then we end up being burnt out, which really means that we don't have, we're very lackluster. We don't have that get up and go. There's no motivation to kind of move forward. Um, there might even be a sense of helplessness or hopelessness. Um, we tend to be detached from things. It's like, yeah, whatever. 
no big deal. Don't really, you know, we don't have a lot of interest in things anymore because we've gone through all of our resources, not just in our body, but our emotional state of being and our cognitive part as well. So what are some of the causes of burnout? You know, some of it could be our lifestyle choices, our level of perfectionism, never being able to let things go. It could also be, especially as in this year, the world and all of the changes that are happening. And it's really, really hard to keep things going right now, right? We feel like we're on a constant treadmill and we're running just to keep in the same place. But there's many different causes for burnout. And they tend to be, can be very individual as well. So I wanna ask you a question on a scale of one to 10. 10 being I'm, you know, so, I'm, I have so much energy. I'm feeling so wonderful. It's so great. Everything is awesome. I've got that get up and go. And one is I am really feeling pretty exhausted. I'm, you know, flatlined, burnt out, not a lot left to me, you could say. Where are you on that scale? Just to have that quick assessment. Where are you? And it might change, you know, kind of goes up, up and down through the day and day to day, but we sort of have, you know, a pretty normalcy for our our up and downs with that, a rough idea of where we are. So just throw that number, real quick number in the chat box, just so I can get a sense of where you're at. And if there's anything in particular that feels burdensome for you, also share that in the chat box. And if you're not sure where the chat box is, simply hover along the bottom of the screen there is a circle with a speech bubble there. Just click on that. So somebody's a seven, somebody's a five, somebody's sharing that staying focused is a challenge. Yeah, when we've got so much stuff going on, right? All of these changes, all of these competing demands, all of these priorities, which one is really a priority? Another person is, yep, I'm sort of in the middle at a five. Some others are I'm pre doing pretty good on the higher end of the spectrum. So wherever you are, it's information. We don't wanna beat ourselves up. If you feel like you're a two or three, good information to know. And if you're a seven or eight, good information to know. So if I'm a seven or eight, I wanna look at what's keeping me at that high level, right? How am I? keeping that energy going? How am I keeping that positive view of the world? And if I'm a two or three, then okay, what are those factors that are really contributing to that? What are the, what's that load that's too heavy? And how am I supporting myself to be a three or a two, right? Because that's a lot higher than a one. So there's something that you're already doing to take care of yourself. Really, really important. We know that the consequences of burnout, of long-term stress are detrimental to our health. The CDC for decades has named that stress is the number one underlying cause and condition of chronic illness and disease. We know it damages our relationships, definitely stalls our careers, ruins our passion, right? We just don't have that get up and go anymore. But I do wanna share, we can transform it. I was there, trust me, we can change that around. And it's all in what we do moment to moment to moment. And it starts with the small. And it starts in the body. It does not start in the mind, which is usually where we might try to tackle those issues that we have. You know, I'm trying to fight the mind with the mind. Oh, that just gets into something that's unrecognizable pretty soon. Let's get into the body and let's do this even if we're not having burnout for any stress. And I'm gonna say this for everybody this year because everybody's having some level of stress. Let's take care of our body. When our body is well-nourished, well-resourced, then our mind and our heart is the same way as well. Our physiology drives our psychology. 
So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we're getting enough sleep. This is the number one fundamental for our physical health and well-being. If we're getting less than seven hours, especially if we're getting less than six, and definitely less than five, we are in a sleep-deprived state. So many of us that I talk to are getting five or six hours of sleep, and how can we then attend to things? We need sleep for heart health. We need sleep for brain health. It's the time when our body consolidates information from the day. It detoxifies things as well. So start looking at your sleep schedule. Have a regular bedtime that gives you at least eight hours in bed, which might give you the opportunity for seven hours of sleep. Unplug from your electronic devices, all of your electronic devices, at least one hour before bed. There's blue light in there that interferes with your natural production of melatonin, which helps us get into those sleep cycles. Do some gentle stretching before we get to sleep. Stop eating three hours before you go to bed. Give your digestive system and your body that rest, that opportunity to rest. Plus it puts us into intermittent fasting, which is really healthy for us. For food, we wanna eat slowly, good food, healthy food like our grandparents and great grandparents ate. Kicking out that sugar, which is so inflammatory to our body, to our brain, we need our body to be healthy. Sugar is in so much of our food. We can also emotionally eat, right? Lots of people, COVID-19, 19 pounds is what we're kind of been gaining on average. So instead, I do something that feels nourishing, something that's fun. Um, I might go out for a walk. So how do you guys exercise through the day? Exercise or move, and or both. A little bit different, the two. But what are you doing for movement? This is one of the fantastic, fantastic um, ways to reduce stress. And actually, there's a ton of studies that show that um, just you know, 20 minutes a day of exercise can boost your mood for 12 plus hours. And it's really important for your overall health and well-being. So what do you guys do for movement? Zumba. All right, awesome. Walking, yes, our bodies are meant to walk. Cavemen, we used to walk like eight hours a day. We're walking all the time. Walking is so good. More walking, yes. Yeah, then we can see how, how many steps am I taking a day? 5,000, 8,000, 10,000. Maybe that will be a new little goal that we have for ourselves. And take walks often, right? Drink lots of water, stay hydrated. Water in equals water out. And we walk around. And when we're walking, by the way, here's a really big stress tip, just walk. And you might be curious and say, what do you mean by that? And I mean, well, what are you doing? doing usually when you're walking. You're usually thinking about something, right? What you just left or where you're going, which means we're really not getting that break. Our body's walking, our legs are walking, but our head is detached from that. So reattach your head, connect it to your body, and when you walk, even if it's just down the hall or up or down a flight of stairs, be present to it. Lots of, of appreciation to our feet, to the cadence, to it's our intelligence of our body that knows how to walk and keep us upright. I love it. Other people ride their bike, Zumba on Zoom, awesome, more walking, I love it. So have good walking, cardio, stretching, um, strength training as well, and have fun with it. Plan something good on the weekend whether it's hiking or kayaking or biking or who knows what, gardening, leaf raking, whatever it is, move, move, move the body. Other things when we're looking to overcome burnout are to you know find somebody to support us. By the time we're burnt out, it's really difficult to pull ourselves out of that hole. Find somebody, whether it's a coach, a mentor, a therapist, again, we here at the Employee Assistance Program are here for you. We offer free confidential counseling, so please reach out to us for that. 
We also want to have a goal. We know when we are feeling down or we're feeling trapped or we don't really feel like or see our future, we need those goals to keep us going. And I'm not saying huge goals. I'm saying like you want to plant some plants or you want to start a little mini garden or maybe there's a room that you want to paint. Um, you know, just something very small or maybe you want to learn a new recipe or how to bake bread, something that really doesn't have a lot of meaning to anything else, but it gets you going. And that's a huge key when we're feeling stressed or burnt out. We want to focus our attention on something that feels good, that feels fun, that feels nourishing, but doesn't have anything tied to it that's demanding, right? Because we're already feeling like we have so many demands for our time, our attention and our energy. We wanna pace ourselves. Definitely, the more burnt out you are, the more tired you are, move. We need to move, we have to move, but just do it at a slower pace, it's okay. You know, a lot of this is getting out of our ideal of how we should be, right? Anytime you hear you saying yourself that word should, you wanna just move away from that. Stop shooting on yourself as the saying goes, right? Because when we say should, that's telling you that whatever you're doing is wrong. And we've gotta bring in that love and that kindness and that self-acceptance, especially when we're feeling really overwhelmed. That's been a huge piece that's miss, been missing of us stopping and taking care of ourselves. Planning something to look forward to, really important. So what are you guys looking forward to this weekend? Today's Thursday, you've got another day to kind of figure it out. Maybe you're, you've got Monday off, maybe not, but what's something you're looking forward to? Anybody have anything? Again, these don't have to be big. Nothing in life has to be big. You know, as I grow and I get older and I keep uplifting myself, it becomes more and more obvious that I tackle the big in the small. It doesn't matter what it is. And I celebrate myself with every single thing that I do that takes care of me, whether it's a walk or I had a really healthy meal or I washed my face at night or I got a foot massage or whatever it is. Awesome, so people are sharing, they're gonna have some alone time, yes, especially if you haven't had any. Visiting your grandkids, lucky you. Somebody has a new book, awesome. Uh, running after your grandkids, yes, that's a double whammy of awesomeness. Baking with your kids, I love that. Good quality family time. So, so inspiring. So we reverse burnout by taking that regular break, by pausing, by stepping on the pedal, not on the gas pedal, on the brake pedal. Um, we can also bring ourselves to a better place with some guided imagery, whether that's how it is that I wanna show up or maybe a relaxation scene of a beautiful beach or vacation place that you've been de desiring to go to. We wanna put ourselves into that positive frame of mind. We also need to manage expectations. So notice when we feel overwhelmed or stressed, there's usually an exorbitant expectation that is present. And while it might seem sometimes that it comes from outside, a lot of times it comes from ourselves. So one of the things that I'm going to invite everybody to do is every single day to put you on your list. Not just on your list though, on the top of your list, like number one. And how does that sit with you? If you had to be number one, if you were number one on your list, would that feel comfortable? 
Would it not feel comfortable? For many of us, it wouldn't feel very comfortable. But I'm inviting you to do it. Not that you're discounting everything else, but as a way of taking care of you, because we know when we take care of ourselves, we then have the capacity to take care of those that we love. And really self-care is an act of love for everyone that you care about. So bringing that in is really important. Somebody's sharing they're good with it. Awesome, good, fantastic. But we, lots of us learn that over time, right? After we've gotten into trouble points and trouble situations. So 15 to 20 minutes a day by yourself or doing something that feels really joyful for you. Could be painting or drawing, could be listening to a podcast, an audio cast, a TED talk. Maybe you wanna learn a new language, do some uh, Zentangle, jigsaw puzzle, um, writing letters to yourself, to old, friends that you haven't seen in a while, playing some music, making a playlist, dancing, something that feels really good, swinging on a hammock or a swing. All of these things are really important to integrate through the day so that you have something to look forward to and so that you have a root, a baseline of that self-care. So what could be a baseline of self-care that you will do every day? Maybe just one of a long list. I made a very long list the other day of how I can take care of myself and I invite you to do the same thing, but what might be one thing that is on your list of self-care? Could be some meditation. I'm going to share with you an app that we have at a moment. Could be singing, dancing, somebody sharing going to bed on time. Yes, awesome. Do that. We know the repercussion of a good night's sleep. It's a wonderful versus the repercussion of a bad night's sleep. It's not so wonderful. Somebody sharing, they just try to walk as many days as they can. It's really relaxing. So whatever you do for self-care, even if it's that cup of coffee in the morning with the first three sips, just be present to yourself and the coffee. What I'm going to invite you to do is to celebrate yourself when you do that. And that means to recognize, to even say it out loud and say, I'm taking care of myself right now. I'm spending a moment with me. I had three bites of a great meal. I took care of myself. I walked down the street and back. I took care of myself. I let myself lie in bed with my eyes closed and my hand on my chest and smile at myself. I took care of myself. Whatever it is, recognize yourself that you're taking care of yourself because this is how when we take care of ourselves like this, then we are more easily able to set up those self-care boundaries of yes, that really means yes, and no, that really means no. And we can do it in a way that comes from our heart instead of one where we're trying to shield ourselves from the world. So I'd love to share a whole lot more with you. And if you do have any questions, please ask them in the chat box. We've just got another few minutes. I wanted to make sure that you are aware about the Employee Assistance Program, free confidential resource for you and your household members. Simply reach out via the website or the toll-free number. We have counseling sessions. We have legal consultation, unlimited financial um, consultations as well. You can see here the whole other list. And then my strength is our app that has mindfulness on there, meditations, a section of E, um, little e-courses, nine little e-courses like sleep and if you're a new parent and um, addiction and stress. It also has some, um, a little section of affirmations, which I think is really beautiful to look at through the day. So we are here for you, not just if you're feeling stressed or burnt out, but really just the simple things, like if you're trying to 
adopt a child or you're um, you're moving or you need to find an orthodontist in your area, whatever it might be. Any questions? You know, we didn't have a ton of time, but hopefully you got a good reminder of, yeah, it's okay for me to kind of slow down. It's okay for me to have fun. It's okay for me to have 15 or 20 minutes for myself every day, guiltlessly. I'm giving you the, the uh, prescription for that. If I was a physician, I'd give you a prescription for that. I'm giving you the permission slip, I should say to do that. Just hang on for another minute or so. If you have any questions, I am here. All right, so I will um, not seeing any questions coming over. So again, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Keep staying well, taking care, take care of yourself. Give yourself lots of hugs. Thanks so much. Take care.